What is up everybody and welcome back to another edition of Lovely Loners. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at this Ferrum Forge Knifeworks Scepter. Uh, this is the blue and bronze variant. They have a ton of different variants for this knife. Um, I think three, maybe four different colors. Um, and then they actually have multiple different uh, mill patterns that they offer as well. This knife, to us is, this knife is on loan to us from my friend John over on Reddit, the same uh, who sent me the Shirgor of Neon. So thank you so much, John. I'm super appreciative of being able to check out this knife once again before you do. <laughs> um, so he's been very uh, kind in shipping these knives through me and giving me an opportunity to check them out before they ultimately make it to him. So I'm very grateful for that. If you guys would like to send me gear for Lovely Loners, you can do so by e emailing me at tavarishworks at gmail.com. And let's go ahead and jump into the features and flaws on this one. So this knife is an overbuilt little beauty. Um, the milling on this particular version is super nice. It's very smooth. You can see there's kind of a hash pattern here. So it looks good, it feels good, and uh, I really appreciate that. They have some versions that I think are just flat as well, um, but I really like the accents that are granted to the knife through this milling pattern, so I definitely appreciate that. On the reverse side, you just have this 45-degree uh, chamfer all the way around the frame, and that's pretty much what you're going to get. Um, but like I said, it comes in many variations. This is the blue and bronze variation. I think they have a bronze one uh, where the frame is bronze and then a re regular plain tie one. Um, so that's pretty cool. Definitely a little bit something for everyone. Moving on, this knife, with uh, uh, along with other Ferrum Forge knives, are equipped with the HRD, or the Ho Hoback Rolling Detent. Uh, this is, of course, an, adjust an adjustable detent. And you just uh, stick a Torx in there or whatever little... Um, screw type is used I think in the Mordax that I had my hands on uh, it was just a, like a flathead um, I'm not all about the HRD and maybe that's just me I talked to some other people in the community who are a little bit more well versed in knives than myself and um, everyone was pretty supportive of the feature but I find it personally to be a little bit gimmicky um, I, I, I'm finding that the housing for the detent uh, if you make for a very strong snappy detent and you push this thing uh, right up in there, the housing actually comes out along with the uh, little ball. And so that ends up like scraping against the tang. Um, and that's just not super great. And I don't know. It definitely works. Uh, and so I don't want to say that it's like a gimmick in the sense that like they're charging you for a useless feature. That's not what I mean. It's not a useless feature. Um, it definitely does exactly what it's supposed to do. It makes the deployment and closing a little bit smoother because the ball is rolling along the track as opposed to just dragging across it. So you're definitely reducing friction there. Um, as well as the ability to dial in your uh, how snappy your action is or how strong your detent is without having to disassemble the knife and um, make kind of... Uh, unprecise changes to the tension of the lock bar. Um, instead, you have this very precise way to be able to dial in that perfect detent. Um, I just find that uh, you don't really need that, right? If, if, if the maker just makes a good detent from the get-go, um, it's kind of unnecessary. And I totally, I totally understand uh, where people are coming from with like, hey man, I want to be able to adjust it. Maybe sometimes I want it to be a little bit different uh, and I don't have to take a knife apart and everything. And so like I buy that 100%. And if like this is a feature that motivates you for those reasons, uh, then I support that. I'm, I don't think that it's not worth it. Uh, it's just that to me, it seems like uh, something that they can add to the list of cool features for reasons you should buy the knife when ultimately it doesn't make much of a difference. Um, everyone that I've talked to so far, and again, this is wildly anecdotal and in no way um, am I saying that this is the only thing that's true um, but most of the people I talk to just dial it until it's exactly how they want it and then they just leave it so at that point it's like why not just get a knife that has a good detent on it and I don't know this one's a bad example because the person who sold this to me is going to be like well I tuned that one <laughs> um, I know you did but like this one for example you know this just came that way and it just works, and the knife just works. And so, again, I, I don't want to spend too much more time on this. I know that I'm kind of droning on about it, but it, it just, as a selling point, to me, doesn't seem 
like it makes that much of a difference or like it's that big of a deal. I would say the fact that the D10 ball actually rolls is a bigger deal than it being able to adjust. But even then, I mean, this is not, you know, the smoothest knife. Uh, it is on bearings. I haven't taken it apart. I'm not sure what kind of bearings, but uh, it is on bearings and, um, you know, it's, yeah, it drops shut because I, I loosened the D10 a little bit or uh, weakened it a little bit, but, you know, it's still... I still have had other much smoother knives that are cheaper than this. This is still a $500 knife at the end of the day. Um, and so, I don't know. You guys tell me down below in the comments what you think about the Hoback Rolling Detent. I'm really interested to see what people's experience has been with it. Um, if they think it's worth it, if you think it's a gimmick, uh, or what. So please definitely write down below your opinions on that. Because, again, I'm still on the fence with it. I've only experienced it twice now. Um, and I haven't owned either knife, so I haven't really gotten to like carry it for a long time. So uh, I, I have a little bit of a biased view, and I know that's a little bit unfair when I'm discussing a maker's knife. So um, let me know what you think about that, and if I should maybe purchase a knife that has one so that I can experience what it's like to own um, over a long period of time. But let's move on. Uh, I do have to say this clip is too small for me. The tension on it is ridiculous. It's super tough. Um, there's only this tiny little section... Like, I'll put my finger next to it for size comparison. Tiny little, uh, maybe quarter of an inch section at the at the deepest, um, and then that's it. So, yeah, it's super grippy, meaning once you kind of uh, manage it uh, over the edge of your pocket, it's not going to go anywhere. Fine. Um, but I, if the measurement for a good pocket clip is, does it fall out of your pocket... Um, then I think we have a really low bar. So assuming that any good pocket clip on any knife that's $500 is going to stay in your pocket, this one, by comparison, is garbage, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, especially, again, I'm not a big fan of spring clips on knives that are more expensive. I understand that people who use their knives more than I do, or people that aren't as much of a, uh, I don't know, sucker for fancy things and maybe want something a little bit more utilitarian, that the spring clips do well. And so I, again, support that. But this one in particular, I think is way too small. Um, if you're going to be using this as a user uh, and really, really putting it through its paces, then you're probably wearing thick jeans and this is going to suck for that. Um, and if you're not, then it's like, you know, if you are wearing slacks and, and these are pocket jewelry for you like they are for me, then you don't want a, a spring clip, especially not a, a shoddy small one. So um, I just don't see who they're really selling to with this. Uh, and so that bumps me out. If they just made it a little bit bigger uh, in, in kind of all dimensions or, or, or at least in length, um, then it would have been fine. It's just a little bit too short. Uh, now, the flipper tab, if you guys saw my Mordax video, I absolutely hate the flipper tabs on these uh, Fair and Forge knives, but I have to give them credit uh, where credit is due, which is that what they did on this one is it is bigger. Um, so even though it's a much smaller knife, the flipper tab is significantly larger than on the previous model that I had, which was the Mordax, which was an older model. Um, so the Mordax had a much smaller uh, tab, which made it harder to get good purchase um, or to even just really apply pressure to the tab. So big props there. They definitely increased the size and that made a huge difference. This is way easier to flip than the Mordax was. Um, that said, they also added a bit of a stone wash or an acid wash rather. Whatever they've got on the flats here. It looks like an acid wash to me. They added that acid wash to the edge of the flipper tab as well, which... Um, is, again, not providing nearly as much purchase as jimping, but it's better than smooth satin flats or like a mirror polish. So, okay, I got to give them credit there as well. Um, again, credit where credit is due. And yet, at the end of the day, it's still this rounded off, downward angled, no jimping flipper tab. And while I don't slip on this one nearly as much, uh, you know, it's just still not my first choice. I do still slip on it sometimes, especially if I catch just the edge. Um, but again, major, major improvement. I understand that this is part of the design language for their knives in general now, and so that this flipper tab is probably not going anywhere anytime soon. And so all I can ask is that they make uh, efforts and strides to uh, make it a little bit more usable if they're not going to change the overall design. And they've done a great job of starting down that journey um, by increasing the size and putting that acid wash on there. Little bit of jimping, guys, and I'm going to be a much bigger fan. Little bit of jimping. That's all. Nothing crazy, just a little bit.
Um, so as I mentioned before, this knife is definitely a user. Um, it's super thick for a knife this big. It's got very thick, overbuilt, non-milled tie slabs. It has an extraordinarily thick blade stock. In fact, let's line that up next to something like a Bodega. This is a Bodega 2.0, so it's a little bit thinner. But you can see here, sorry, I'm all over the place with my angle. Uh, you can see here that the blade stock on the Scepter is measurably thicker than it is on the Bodega. So it's a very substantial little knife considering the length. Um, and this is going to make it excellent for taking on really any task. Um, you have this really large lock bar kind of jammed in there. It's, uh, it's not too far in in terms of lock up. It's only about maybe close to 20%, 18%. But uh, there's a lot of surface area there. So it's not going to fail on you that direction. Um, you have a really substantial stop pin in there. You can see it's super thick. Uh, so you're not going to have issues there either. Um, you would probably fail to apply enough pressure to a knife this small long before either of these locking mechanisms failed. In addition to that, you do have this lovely acid wash down the tall flat grinds of the blade. And then you have this kind of, uh, it is a satin finish, but it's not like one of those crazy beautiful hand rub satins. It's a satin that you're not afraid to get scratched up a little bit. It's got a little bit of a uh, texture to it, um, and I super appreciate that. So the finishes on the knife definitely match uh, what its intentions seem to be, and there's a really good continuous flow of theme throughout the knife, which is that it's supposed to be nice looking, and when you show it to somebody, it's not going to offend anyone who doesn't use knives. They'll say, oh, that's pretty, or oh, look how small it is. Um, and yet, at the same time, it's really designed, and, and a lot of the uh, finishes on it are with respect to the fact that you can absolutely demolish this thing. Um, so definitely appreciative of that, and it's 100% a user. Um, now, the next thing in my notes is kind of funny. I, I was holding this knife and kind of flipping it around in my hands, and I realized... This thing would make a great projectile. Um, it's just such a solid piece of metal, and it's so small and kind of bullet-shaped. Uh, you know, if somebody grabbed uh, something and stole it from you and started running away, uh, and maybe they were a little bit faster than you, you could probably huck this at somebody's uh, head and do quite a bit of damage. So um, I know that, you know, when people talk about self-defense and knives, the question always is, is it good in your hand? But um, I definitely have to recommend the Ferrum Forge Scepter as the best knife projectile that I've ever come across. You could just take this thing in your hand like a rock and just huck it, and man, it would do some serious damage. Uh, so there's, there's definitely that. Uh, moving on, the uh, uh, feature list here has the clip and the backspacer in bronze, but if you can see, the clip is like a almost like a gunmetal bronze. It's very dark and gray, and the backspacer is like a full-on, like bright, shiny, I mean, in-your-face bronze. I really dislike the fact that these don't match. I feel like you could have just made them match. Um, I mean, it'd be harder to make the clip look like the backspacer, so maybe just make the backspacer look like the clip, but... I don't know. That's ugly to me. I don't. I don't like the fact that there's three colors going on in a knife that barely should have two. Um, but that's, I guess, personal preference or whatever. Uh, and then another thing is, I don't know what's up with Ferrum Forge and these like beads, these pivot beads. Um, but I really just dislike this as a design feature. Um, clearly, their knives have just little quirks that don't quite mesh well with me, and that's fine. Not every knife is for every person, um, and it doesn't make them bad knives. So uh, if you're the kind of person who looks at this and goes, I don't care, perfect. You shouldn't care and keep on not caring and go buy the knife. 100% totally support that. Um, but to me, I'm just, I think it's ugly. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and I, I just, I talked about it a little bit more in the Mordax video, but I don't get this along with the flipper tab as part of the design, uh, language that they stick to. What? Whatever. That's fine. Fair and Forge, you do your thing. Um, so as far as the features and flaws go, that's pretty much going to cover it on this one. It's, uh, it's got a really good action. Again, it's got that HRD. It is fairly smooth. I have the detent tuned to about a medium strength right now. Um, I started off with a really high strength and I just didn't like the fact that the housing for the detent was rubbing up against the um, blade tank so much, so that just didn't work for me. It also, I was slipping a little bit more uh, because of the flipper tab and the stronger detent, I was having a little bit more trouble. Uh, and when I went with a light uh, flip uh, or light detent, um, then the knife was not deploying. So this is a nice middle ground. 
uh, in terms of how uh, tuned the detent is. And I get really good deployment. And if you want, you can shake the knife shut really well in a single shake. Uh, you don't have to, you know, whip it around or um, spend too much time with it. It'll close. So it's very smooth, and that definitely is helped uh, by the HRD. You can really feel it, actually, uh, the, the HRD helping there. So I definitely admit that. Um, but there is a little bit of a story time with this knife, albeit a loner. Um, so this knife was won in a raffle by the uh, current owner, John. And uh, I asked him to ship it through me because he's amazing. And he said yes because he's amazing. Uh, and then when the person who was raffling the knife asked me to send me their address, they were like, hey, we're neighbors. Um, so it turns out the guy literally lives like three minutes away from where I work. Uh, and so we are... I mean, we literally travel on the same road every day. Um, and so that was really cool. I got to go meet him. He's the second uh, person that I met on Reddit in real life. He brought the scepter for me. We were able to completely avoid shipping and insurance costs. Awesome. Um, his name is Rich, and he was super nice to meet. We met up at a Starbucks, and he gave me the knife, and then we you know, spent uh, an hour or two uh, talking about knives and all kinds of stuff. So that was super awesome. Uh, I'm really thankful to both John and Rich for making this a wonderful experience all around. Uh, it's time to get this knife sent back to John so that he has an opportunity to try it himself. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you'd like to see future videos, uh, maybe with any of these knives here, please subscribe. If you like this video, hit that like button. Follow me on Instagram at Tavarish Works. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.